checking connection. Hello? Am I live? Hi! Hi, everybody! Isn't this fun? Uh, hi, I'm Betsy Wolf. I'm one of the co-founders of Broadway Evolved, and welcome to my home slash Broadway Evolved headquarters. This is our one bottle of hand sanitizer in case you were wondering. So this is Broadway Evolved Homeschool Edition. That's right, you are social distancing, hopefully quarantining with loved ones. And um, <laughs> I'm seeing all these fun comments already. And we are going to be bringing you every day, Monday through Friday, 15 minutes of what I hope will be an encouraging, safe environment where you will learn from the Broadway Evolved faculty. That's right, Jeremy Jordan's probably here right now waiting for me to press in, Betsy, in, in. And um, all different artists from the Broadway community for as long as we think we might be doing this, all for free, because we want you to know what we're about. We love educators, we love students. In fact, later this summer, we have three summer intensives. I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh, that's a familiar face. And it's for students and educators. It's a revolutionized educational program that we've turned upside down and we bring you the best technical training as well as what we think is a really safe, awesome learning environment that represents what is going on today. Okay, Jeremy is here, Jeremy is here. Um, let's see, let's see, I'm, I'm figuring this out, you guys. <gasps> there he is, I see him, I see him. Will he be in PJs too? Let's see. Waiting for Jeremy M. Jordan. Betsy, you are the queen. Am I too close? No, I feel like I'm. Am I super close? You're a little close, but I, okay. I like it. I like it. Well, I like. Ha I have it on my lap. I have it on my laptop, but I'm like, I'm like, five feet away. That's so you're, weird. You're, well, you should be six. Remember, social distancing is <laughs> six feet away. So let's Fair. let's try and respect that. Um, I understand. Jeremy, I'm so glad you're here with us. First of all. Welcome to the Broadway Evolved Homeschool. I would be remiss if I didn't say, though, how are you doing? Who are you quarantining with? And how are you today? I'm um, good today. Um, I'm I'm good, you know, not sick, thank God. Um, okay. Yet. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just home with my um, with my wife and my daughter and and living our lives and staying away from the crowds you know we we i'm lucky enough to to be in jersey uh we have a house and um a yard and a dog we have a backyard we have some space yeah so we have some space and you know we can usually go walking around the neighborhood there's usually not it's easy to wide streets you can yes. you know if you pass somebody you can be like okay it's a little bit more challenging than riverside park but i'm making it work I can imagine. I'm very sorry. <laughs> well, I'm really, really glad that you're here. Look at how funny this is. You're, did you know this? That's you. Hey. Oh, look at me. Wearing a hat. So, look at you. When we used to hug, when we used to, <laughs> you know, not just. We'll hug again. Hugs. We'll hug again one day. Exactly. So, Jeremy, you've been, you've come to Broadway Ball for two years in a row, which I've always appreciated. And not only are you a brilliant teacher, but you're a brilliant artist. I've had the pleasure of sharing space with you multiple times. And Thanks. I have thought a lot about this in the past couple of days. Okay. That the, some of the skills that I am learning to deal with while quarantining and some of the things that I think that make me, are trying to make me successful at this quarantine are some of the exact same skills that you need as an artist. And I think it's also why ultimately artists have thrived in a certain way when, I don't wanna say things have hit the fan, but at times of trial in our world um, and tribulation, the thing that artists seem to have, to have is that, um, are things that are gonna make us resilient in, the, in this time. Uh, for one thing for me, it's like a balance of anxiety and bringing that also into my work. Like always acknowledging that fear is going to be in some of my own work too. 
Yeah. Like realizing that I'll never master this. I'll never master quarantining. And that's okay to feel like unsafe at times. So I thought I would at least start off with that and say, I feel like that's some of the things that make you an exciting performer. Because when I'm on stage with you, I never quite know exactly what you're going to do. And it's one of the things like I love about you as a performer because I'm always kept on my toes. So I yeah. don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit. But yeah, 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 yeah. I think fear is essential as a performer, and fear is definitely something that I think we're also living in right now. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, for me, when I started, um, when I started performing, it was more out of a, a sort of way to, to push my own personal fear side. Like, I, you know, I was afraid of speaking in public. I was afraid of like being myself. I was uh, afraid of, you know, uh, you know, getting bullied or getting picked on, and so I would pretend to be other people, right? And so that was that was kind of my escape, and I think that works for a, a little while, hmm. but um, you know, it has to evolve from that. So you know, it starts out. It start for me. It started out like that, and then and then as I got older and, and a little bit more mature, I began to. You know, you begin to understand your fear, and you begin to sort of utilize it in in new and interesting ways, and then you begin to challenge your own fear. And I think the the sort of the best thing that I that I feel like I can do when I'm in a situation where I am nervous or I'm afraid I'm going to mess up is to challenge that. And, and how do you do that? Because we get that all the time, right? All, tons of students are always like, how do you not be nervous? And I'm like, no, well, you know, there's, it always might come and go. So it's, it's learning yeah. to deal with it. So how do you deal with that? Well, you know, preparation is good and trusting your instincts and trusting your training. So having training is always a solid foundation for anything. And preparation is, is, is the sort of secondary aspect to that foundation so you, you have training and you have preparation and if you've had enough practice and, and as you get better and better and better those things will click into place and sort of become your default sensory mechanisms that you use when you're on stage and then everything else is is added on top of that so say you're going to do an audition or a performance you know the words you know the lyrics you understand what you're prepared you go out there and you test your fear in a way, you know, like a lot of people, they bring their sides up with them or they'll put them on the ground or they'll have like okay. learning, like techniques to like remember the lyrics, throw all of that out, uh, give yourself, allow yourself the, the room to mess up, allow yourself the room to do something that's going to be different than what you prepared because your preparation is going to lay that foundation for you no matter what. And the, and the way that, you create excitement for yourself and discover things for yourself because there's it is is to is to go out and 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 sort of throw that stuff out and and continue to explore and to experiment because uh, for me there's nothing more exciting than seeing someone who's on the stage or in an audition room or in a master class or any sort of setting discovering something for the first time yes i always say that i always say it's so much more interesting to watch someone discovering something as opposed yeah. to informing us of something they already know. And, and exactly, and I, and I think there's also a difference, and this is tricky, um, but I think there's also a difference between showing someone that you're discovering something and actually <laughs> discovering it. Yes. You know, which like, cause you can- you have to be discovering it too. Which yeah. Means you have to be vulnerable, be vulnerable and open yourself yeah, you, up. You can, you can prepare, you know, a moment of, change and moment of like excitement and like a light bulb going off in your song or your scene or whatever you can prepare that but if it's not natural if it doesn't come to you as that then it's we're gonna see it pretty easily yeah. as that so well, i mean you you find new ways in every day you think of something that you know will will take you into the moment or the scene or the song a little bit differently you you use whatever emotions you were sort of dealing with that day and let those actually inform you like let your fear inform you you know if i'm going into an audition and i had 
a kind of a crappy day or I'm feeling nervous or like I'm not feeling super confident or any sort of fear that that goes into that like it's just you can either do one of two things uh, you can set it aside and try to leave it all outside the door or you can just take your whole self in with you you and know you argue that that is going to be far more interesting than the most prepared yeah. version of what you yes. thought you were going to do Yes, but only if you have that preparation. Correct. Because, Correct. you know, I think a lot of teachers tell kids, you know, leave it all outside and go in and be the character. And that's fine if you're like, if like that's your toolbox. You know, if your toolbox is like everything that I've prepared and here it is and I, ha I can't think of any of that other stuff because I'll forget. But I do think that you have to eventually reach the next step, which is like I've prepared, yeah. like... Yeah. If you're not prepared enough, sure, leave it all outside and then, like, use every ounce of your brain to try to remember the words. But, I mean, I, I, would, I would argue against that even because even if you mess up, you can always start over again. You know, generally when, when people are watching, looking at you, whether you're in a concert or whether you're in an audition, you know, I mess up all the time in my concerts. And, oh, I've seen and you just, you just like, go with it. You either keep going or you stop and start over or you, like, make a goofy face and laugh at yourself. It's... It's but a drop in the pan, awesome? you know, it's just a moment. It's also what's so great about like theater too. It's this expectation that the audience and we are we are there to do something that only happens this one time. So what would you tell a like 15 year old, a 17 year old of how to acquire, how to cultivate that sense of like fear is okay, the unknown is okay. I know that's a loaded question, but like, what would be yeah? I mean, I, I mean, it, 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 I'm. I think we're all always going to be dealing with with that, you know, and dealing with the fact that we are using it. Because who else in what other career do you use your fear to like propel yourself forward for success? Like, it's hard. It's hard to do that, and you're doing it in the moment, and you're doing it often with just one chance. Yeah. You know, but I mean. The thing that the, the the way to I mean for me honestly it's just learning to deal with and and learning to accept rejection it's learning to accept failure it's learning to accept imperfection because I mean everything we do is going to have an element of imperfection to it now some people might find that more exciting than you know a quote unquote perfect performance I would but you know it's never going to be exactly as you plan and as soon as you can sort of a I think acceptance, fear and the acceptance of that fear and the acceptance of the results of that fear are really, really important to maintaining a healthy relationship with yourself and with your craft, but also, you know, because like a lot of people get burnt out and they get burnt out really fast, you know, like a lot of, most of the people I went to college with aren't doing this anymore. And it's not because they're not good. I mean, a lot of them are really good. Mm -hmm. It's... It's how you deal with the fear, and it's how you deal with the rejection, and it's how you use that to fuel yourself and to grow. And honestly, you know, a lot of people will find, and many people listening will find, that that's not something that, that they want to do. And that's okay. Because uh, we, we, I know you have, Betsy, and I have developed incredibly thick skins. And we've been successful. And even with the success that we've had, we are still thickening our skin because it's it's you know and 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 as actors we're very vulnerable and we're very uh, emotional people and so uh, it is it is a bit of a tricky sort of balance to have that thick skin but also still be vulnerable and still be emotional and in touch with all that stuff but also just to, to learn to to let go of all all the other things that you know that bring you down because you will leave auditions feeling you know, incomplete, and you'll leave performances feeling like you could have done better. Yeah. And there's yeah. always going to be another time. And and if you, and if that fear and that sort of pain is too overwhelming for you, and you can't, you know, push forward out of that, then it's okay to to take a break from it or to try something else. I mean, it's 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 a lot of people come into this thinking like. I'm not going to stop until I make it to the top. And uh, it's, it's, it's often not the case. You know, you'll find along that route, you know, other pathways. 
But the more open you are and the more fearless you are and the more sort of in tune with your own, you know, experience you are, the more those pathways will, if not lead you to the success and the career that you wanted, to a road that's going to take you to happiness. I could not I agree more, especially during during this time learning yeah. to live with like all the uncertainty and fear and excitement uh is truly i think what also makes us kind of successful as artists um two things before you go what is a corona confession i saw this i think it was on jessica Vosk's account maybe other people are doing it too but i kind of did love it um, what? Do you, I, like, I don't know, hashtag Corona confession. I was just curious, is there anything you want to confess during Corona? <laughs> like, what's been going I, on? I'll start. Anything, anything that, uh, oh, you are wearing pajamas. This is also the first time I've curled my hair in like two weeks. <laughs> um, well, this is exactly what I was wearing on Rosie O'Donnell yesterday. Yes. Wait, did you even change? Um, uh, did you even like, change for bed or no? Just... The undershirt is different. Oh. The undershirt is different. Um, but yeah, I definitely worked out yesterday and I still haven't showered. I mean, that's that's a pretty standard Corona confession, I feel like. Pretty, that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty good one. Um, well, I'm... <laughs> no, I, I think we've been pretty safe. Like, I think we've, I don't think that, um, you know, we've only gone out to the store, um, you know, like I've got our liquor store here. No, we don't talk about liquor stores. There's mostly kids no, here. Um, but, you know. Apparently, there are many educators here as well. I know. But there's, a, you know, I think we're trying to be as safe as possible. And, yes. Uh, you know. And it's very, it reminds me of, like, our in artistic community. I mean, we all have to kind of be in this together. Like, I mean, truly. There's not, there's one thing yeah. I'm learning. It's like everyone must play a part. Every role is important. There's no bigger part than... There's no leads and no ensemble members. Like every single no. person has to be in this together. I will say, I will say, I wrote my congressman for the first time, my senators for the first time. I did too. That's I've always like people always say like write to them and call them, and I'm like, I'll like, but I've never actually done it, and I actually did it. Maybe now we'll we will we will do that more going forward and become. Yeah. Because like it's scary, you know. Because and uh, for me and a lot of my colleagues and a lot of my friends too, it's just like, what do you, you know, this bit, this this business that we're in is like gonna be one of the last things to get back on. And even when it does get back on their feet, people's fear of going to the theater and being near other people, it's gonna be real. And like, then what do you do? Like you're gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to set up a studio in my apartment, much like you have, and or my house. Yeah, and uh, get some better lighting. I'm in the basement because the baby's sleeping. Oh, but um, she's so but yeah, oblivious to this all, which is a kind of a wonderful thing. It is. She's like literally business as usual, except dad's home a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm really, really glad you guys are staying safe. Thank you for your nuggets of wisdom. I couldn't agree with you more. My pleasure. You are the best. Um, you too. So much fun. I can't wait till we get to sing together again. Remember when we used to sing together on the same stage? <laughs> Remember how we used to sing Little Shop together and now I'm, was, then I was going to do it in real life and then I didn't? We are all holding out hope that that is still going to happen. I know it will. It's just a slightly delayed. It's not as exciting as our version, though. I appreciate that. And I couldn't agree more. In fact, well, it's it's just we it's just different. made it like more dynamic. It's different in the it's show. Different. It's just what it is. Yes, no, it's true. You and I just have sing-offs whenever we meet. Yeah. Um, in fact, Basically. I will post right after this. I'll post that funny clip of us uh, rehearsing for it with Houston. Oh my god! That's one of my favorites. It almost looks like I'm like no after you. I'm like no 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 after you. No. Six feet away. So anyhow, that was, that was right before the um. The, the Chipotle food poisoning disaster. Yes, that was right. See, Literally right. hours before. See, you guys just thought you were getting like a lesson in how to be a better actor. Now you're just finding out all these Corona confessions. Jeremy did get Chipotle food poisoning. Oh yes, that was a saga. Quite the time. <laughs> um, thank you for coming to the E and teaching for two years in a row. We look forward to having you late this summer. As yeah. well as, you know, whenever my, this world gets going back and 
Yeah, man. Let's do it. Stay safe. And thank you all for watching. I'm so grateful. Goodbye. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow at 12. You never know who's going to be on. Oh, I'm not going to reveal yet. You have to check back and see who's going to come uh, at 12 Eastern Daylight Time for more nuggets of wisdom, more Corona confessions, and we love you guys and are grateful that you're here with us during this time. We're all in this together. Bye.